Well, moving on, and the mid-north coastal town of Port Macquarie, New South Wales, has for well, many years been known as a retreat for retirees. But now it seems the rest of us are starting to catch on. With more people moving in, Port Macquarie has definite spring in its step. And with its stunning coastal scenery, evolving food and wine scene, plus, of course, sensational weather just about all year round, what's not to like at any age? Well, Adam Ford from the Big Bus Tour and Travel Guide joins us now for a bit of an update on Port Macquarie. He joins us from our Brisbane studio. Adam, great to have you on board. Port Macquarie, not a place that would jump out at me for uh, for people looking for coastal retreats. Yeah, you know what, James? This is actually a really exciting time to visit this destination. It's it's really occupied a place in the Australian psyche for, for decades. I mean, I used to holiday in Port Macquarie as a kid. But what's exciting is it's really managed to reinvent itself. So it's not enough these days just to have, you know, great beaches and some water activities. You've got to have a broad offering that's, in this case, going to appeal to the executive travel market. They've got a gourmet food and wine scene that's booming. Uh, they've got a cultural scene that's, that's just absolutely fantastic, which we'll touch on. It's never been easier to get there. There, direct flights from Sydney and Brisbane and now direct flights from Melbourne with uh, JetGo. So, yeah, take another look at this destination. It's really exciting. Absolutely. And what about places to stay for, say, you know, an executive who is looking for a break or maybe is there on business? Yeah, well, I've got a couple of executive stays for you. The first one is the Observatory by Mantra. Now, this is located on Town Beach, just around the corner from the main city centre. Fantastic coastal views and those iconic Norfolk pines sort of framing the scenery <laughs> that I remember from my time there as a kid. Um, one, two and three bedroom apartment style accommodation and a 100% carbon neutral stay, which is great. Uh, closer into the city centre, have a look at the Macquarie Waters Boutique Apartment Hotel. This is really going to appeal to the executive travel market, very slick, very sophisticated, spacious apartment style accommodation, all the mod cons that you would expect, internet TVs, free Wi-Fi, the list goes on and on. So that's a couple of good options for you. But there's certainly no shortage of accommodation in uh, Port Macquarie. Um, look, we made mention in the introduction about food, wine, you also uh, referenced it. What are, I suppose, what are some of your highlights that's happening uh, in Port Macquarie? Yeah, look, the food and wine scene is going to be one of the biggest surprises of your trip. I've got a few to get through, so I'm going to rattle through them pretty Go quickly. Go for it. Uh, the Stunned Mullet is the city's <laughs> hatted restaurant. Now, that's the only hatted restaurant between Newcastle and the Queensland coast. Impeccable mm. service, impeccable attention to detail, a great modern Australian menu. Uh, have a look at the... Um, locally farmed Sydney rock oysters there, absolutely stunning. And also the toothfish, which is their signature dish. I've never come across it before, sensational. Uh, in town, have a look, oh, that one was located on Town Beach. In town, have a look at Chop and Chill. Now, they do a really interesting fusion of Asian and smoked meats uh, right on the town green. Uh, great views of the Hastings River there. Just around the corner at Zebu in the uh, Ridges Hotel, the Zebu Grill uh, just, just, just missed out on a hat in the 2017 yeah. Good Food Guide. Great review, though, so watch this space. They do a five-course degustation menu there. And down the port end of town, you'll find a Latin Loafer. Now, this is uh, an in, a authentic... Chilean-inspired tapas bar. It does dishes from across South America. I tried this amazing dish there, uh, heirloom carrots, beetroot, smoked goat's cheese, walnuts and fresh honeycomb. Mind-blowing. <laughs> We're looking at some vision of uh, the food that's uh, on offer from some of, these, um, some of these restaurants. It looks extraordinary, I I've got to say. Now, if food and wine, obviously a big, big uh, draw card for many people. What else? I mean, you made mention before some cultural highlights. I mean, what do you see as some of the other things other than, you know, dipping your toe in the, uh, the sun and the surf? Yeah, look, the first place you should stop on your visit is the Glass House, which is located right in the centre of town. Now, this is the city's cultural hub. Now, it courted a lot of controversy when it was built. It opened back in 2009. It went well over budget. But it is an absolutely world-class cultural facility that wouldn't look out of place in any of our major capital cities. A great program of live events there, concerts, you name it. Also a three-level gallery, which is free of charge. They host touring exhibitions, also local exhibitions as well. Well, the Tourist Information Centre is located in the Glass House as well. Don't miss the chance to go down into the, uh, the basement and see some of the original convict-built foundations from the buildings that originally occupied this spot that were built with the establishment of the penal settlement back in uh, 1820. So it's just a really nice link with the past that's been maintained underneath the footings of the main structure.
Oh, great stuff. Look, as always, great to get your thoughts. Appreciate it, Adam. My pleasure.